Question number one. What is the purpose of Apollo Alto Network's firewall in a network infrastructure? Answer. The purpose of Apollo Alto Network's firewall is to protect the network from security threats by monitoring and controlling incoming and outgoing traffic, ensuring only authorized and safe data can pass through. Question no. 2. How does the Palo Alto Firewall handle traffic inspection and packet filtering? Answer. The Palo Alto Firewall inspects network traffic. It looks for specific applications, users, and threats. It filters packets based on security policies to allow or block traffic as per predefined rules. Question number three. Describe the concept of security zones and their significance in Palo Alto Firewalls. Answer. Security zones are logical segments that separate network traffic. Each interface on Apollo Alto Firewall is assigned to a security zone, and policies are applied based on traffic between these zones. They are important for defining security boundaries and applying access control. Security zones in Palo Alto Firewall's group network segments based on trust levels. They help control communication between different zones to enhance network security. Question number four. What are application IDs, and how are they different from port numbers in Palo Alto firewalls? Answer. Application IDs in Palo Alto firewalls identify specific applications, like WhatsApp or Skype, regardless of the port number they use. Unlike traditional port numbers, which only identify protocols, application IDs offer better control over application traffic. Question number 5. How do you configure URL filtering and threat prevention on Apollo Alto firewall? Answer. To configure URL filtering and threat prevention, you set up security policies and profiles that specify what URLs are allowed or blocked and define rules for detecting and preventing threats. Question number 5. What is the purpose of user ID in Palo Alto Network's firewalls, and how do you integrate it with Active Directory? Answer. User ID associates network traffic with specific users and groups rather than IP addresses, allowing security policies to be enforced based on user identity. This enables administrators to apply security policies tailored to individual users or groups. It integrates with Active Directory to associate IP addresses with usernames, enabling granular control based on users. Question number 6. Explain the difference between static and dynamic IP addresses, and how they are handled in address objects on Apollo Alto Firewall. Answer. Static IP addresses stay the same, while dynamic IP addresses may change. In address objects, you can define both types to represent specific hosts or networks for easier management. Question number 7. What are the benefits of using SSL decryption on Apollo Alto Firewall, and how do you configure it? Answer. SSL decryption in Palo Alto firewalls allows the firewall to inspect encrypted traffic. The firewall acts as a proxy, decrypting the SSL traffic, inspecting it for threats, and then re-encrypting it before forwarding it to the destination. This ensures encrypted traffic is not bypassing security controls. SSL decryption allows inspecting encrypted traffic for threats. To configure it, you need to set up certificates and policies to decrypt and inspect SSL, TLS encrypted traffic. Question number 8. What is the purpose of application override in Palo Alto firewalls, and when is it used? Answer. Application override allows treating a specific application differently than its default classification. It is used when you want to apply unique security policies to a particular application. Question number 9. How do you troubleshoot connectivity issues on Apollo Alto Firewall using the CLI and GUI tools? Answer. You can use CLI commands like ping and show to check the status, logs, and configuration. The GUI offers visual tools like the traffic and monitor tabs to troubleshoot issues. Question number 10. Explain the use of dynamic address groups and how they simplify policy management on Apollo Alto Firewall. Answer. Dynamic address groups automatically include IP addresses based on predefined criteria, e.g., AD groups. They simplify policy management by dynamically updating the group without manual intervention. Question number 11. Describe the process of creating security policies on Apollo Alto Firewall in the order of evaluation. Answer. 
Creating security policies involves defining rules that specify what traffic is allowed or blocked. The firewall evaluates policies in top-down order, stopping at the first matching rule. Question number 12. What are the considerations and best practices for performing PanOS upgrades on Palo Alto firewalls? Answer. Best practices include backing up configurations, reviewing release notes, and scheduling upgrades during maintenance windows to minimize disruptions. Question number 13. What is the advantage of Palo Alto SP3 architecture? Answer. SP3 stands for Single Pass Parallel Processing. Some of the advantages of using SP3 architecture are 1. It is used to activate security functions. 2. SP3 provides easy management of firewall policy. 3. SP3 has provisions for single and fully integrated policies. 4. SP3 has a very low latency. 5. SP3 has a very high throughput question number 14. What is Apollo Alto security profile and which address is used in the security policy? Answer. Security profiles in Palo Alto are sets of rules that provide threat protection. They include antivirus, anti-spyware, vulnerability protection, URL filtering, data filtering, and file blocking profiles. These profiles are attached to security policies and help detect and mitigate threats. We need to use the post-NAT zone and the pre-NAT address in the security policy. Question number 15. What is the pre-configured mode in Palo Alto? Answer. Virtual wire is the pre-configured mode in Palo Alto question number 16. What is virtual router? Answer. A virtual router is nothing but a function of the Palo Alto firewall. It is similar like VRF in Cisco routers. Virtual router is part of the layer 3 routing. Question number 17. What are the different types of log types in Palo Alto? Answer. Users can view the following types of log types. 1. Threat log. 2. URL filtering logs. 3. Data filtering logs. 4. Tunnel inspection logs. 5. Hip match logs. 6. SCTP logs. 7. Alarm logs. 8. Traffic logs. 9. Wildfire submissions logs. 10. Correlation logs. 11. Unified logs. 12. GTP logs. 13. System logs. 14. Configuration logs. Question number 18. What is the Global Protect in Palo Alto firewalls and what is supported by the Global Protect VPN? Answer. Global Protect is Palo Alto's VPN solution that provides secure access to network resources for remote users. It integrates with Palo Alto's firewalls to enforce security policies on remote users and ensure their traffic is inspected, protected, and logged even when they are outside the corporate network. The Global Protect VPN supports the SSL VPN. It also provides access to the application in the data center. Question number 19. What are the primary NAT types in Palo Alto? Answer. There are three primary NAT types in Palo Alto. 1. Dynamic IP and port, DIP. 1. Dynamic IP. 2. Static IP. 3. Question number 20. Explain the application command center, ACC. Answer. Question number 21. The ACC or Application Command Center is used to provide visibility into the traffic patterns. It is also used to provide information on the threats using firewall logs. What is Zone Protection in Palo Alto? Answer. Zone Protection Profiles in Palo Alto provide additional security by protecting network zones from flood attacks, port scanning, reconnaissance, and packet-based attacks like SYN floods. ICMP floods, and UDP floods. Question number 22. What is a service route in Palo Alto? Answer. A service route specifies which firewall interface will be used for traffic related to firewall services such as DNS, NTP, wildfire submissions, or PANDB updates. By default, management interfaces are used for service routes, but they can be configured to use data interfaces. Question number 23. 
Explain the difference between security policy and NAT policy in Palo Alto. Answer. 1. Security policy. Determines whether traffic is allowed or blocked between security zones based on defined rules, source, destination address, application, service, etc. 2. NAT policy. Performs IP address and report translation to route traffic from one network to another, usually from private IP addresses to public IPs for internet-bound traffic. Question number 24. How does Palo Alto implement threat prevention? Answer. Palo Alto implements threat prevention through features like 1. Antivirus. Blocking malware by identifying signatures. 2. Anti-spyware. Preventing spyware by analyzing traffic for malicious signatures. 3. Vulnerability protection. Stopping exploits by inspecting traffic for known vulnerabilities. 4. URL filtering. Blocking access to malicious or harmful websites. 5. Wildfire. Preventing zero-day threats by analyzing unknown files in a sandbox. Question number 25. Explain how App ID works in Palo Alto firewalls. Answer. App ID is a core technology of Palo Alto firewalls, enabling accurate identification of applications traversing the network, independent of port, protocol, or encryption. When a session starts, the firewall first checks the packet headers for protocol details. As traffic continues, it inspects the data payload to match against known application signatures. App ID also analyzes application behaviors and heuristics, decrypting SSL traffic when necessary. This process allows administrators to apply security policies based on the actual application, preventing evasive techniques and unknown threats that may bypass traditional port-based firewalls.